I am Dr. Yusniliana uh, Binti Yusof from Kulia of Economics and Management Sciences, and I'll be a moderator for today's session. Uh, this sharing session is organized by Center for Professional Development, IIUM. And for everyone's information, this uh, sharing session consists of two parts. And inshallah, today we will cover the first part of the session, and the second part will be continued tomorrow. Before we start, let me briefly explain uh, the flow of the session. Uh, first, we will begin with our sharing session uh, by the first speaker on the first category of ACRI, named Category Program Pengajaran Innovative or Category for Curriculum for Innovative Program. Next, we will have Q&A session. And after that, we... Um, I mean, uh, for Q&A session, you can post the question in the chat box. And after that, we will continue with the sharing session by the second speaker. And under the category name, category pengajaran transformative or category for transformative teaching. Then again, we're going to have Q&A session. So without further ado, um, I would like to introduce uh, our first speaker, Yang Berbahagia, Professor da Dr. Uh, Nur Azia Alias, Professor Dr. Nur Azia Alias is an honorary professor of teaching and learning at UITM. She was formerly the UITM Director of Academic Development since 2014 until 2021, which is last year, eh, Prof. And she was formerly the UITM Director of Academic Development. Uh, she was also the Director of e learning, the Deputy Dean of I UITM. TM, Faculty of Education, and an instructional designer at the University Distance Learning Center. She did her master and bachelor degrees in physics from Indiana University. Her doctoral degree is in the field of instructional technology, and her field of interest include instructional design and technology and ICT for development technology enhanced learning environment, learner driver learning and design and development research in instructional technology. Professor Dr. Noor Azia Alias has won many awards, including Best IIUM PhD, Education Student Award, Dissertation Award from the Malaysia Educational Technology Association and Academic Excellence Award from COSMA, Malaysia. She also won the EdTech Leadership in Asia for Tertiary Education Award presented during the EdTech Asia 2019. With this regard, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Noor Azia for the first share session. You are welcome, Prof. Thank you very much, Dr. Yusniliana. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Um, if I may share my screen first, Doctor. Yes, I think they allow. Um, yep. Ah, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, no, no. You, all right. Yep. You can share. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, yeah, I hope you can see my screen now. Uh, yeah, we can see your screen. Okay. <coughs> okay, thank you very much again uh, to UIUM and uh, uh, Speedy, of course, for, for inviting us, me and Dr. Shariza, to this session. I think we did this last year, can Dr. Shariza? Yeah. Yes. But we are ever <laughs> willing to do this. Uh, not because we are experts, but we have been involved in uh, this award, special award, since uh, the, the very first one. I mean, it started as uh, APRS and became ACRI in 2018. So ACRI stands for Anugerah Khas YB Menteri Pendidikan Malaysia, actually. And it looks at curriculum and also delivery uh, and, of course, teaching yeah? and the delivery and also assessment. So, if I may, uh, I'm going to kind of move through. Maybe some of the participants have seen these slides before. We are going to use basically the same thing because we are not going to move away from what uh, Ministry of Higher Education has, uh, you know, formulated. But we, I, I will, I will try my best to kind of uh, show some of the things that you may want to bring in when you do this for IIUM. So I'm going to give you a bit of history and what ACRI Award for Innovative Curriculum is and some of the things that we put in the application form 
and our experience in judging and looking at some of the winning attributes and common pitfalls when uh, when we look at the applications from the universities. So um, as I said, we started with APRS. This was during uh, Prof Amin MB's time. Anugerah Pemikiran dan Reka Bentuk Semula. It has not changed much in terms of the category, except we have uh, added assessment. It became ACRI in 2018 and 2019. We started to plan for ACRI 2020, but the pandemic came. So we had we had uh, you know priorities on other things to do. Uh, so in 2021, uh, we didn't do much again. But for this year, inshallah, I was told that um, KPT JPT has already um, gained approval for the main committee for Akri. So inshallah, we will have Akri this year. Uh, but I'm not sure when lah. Yeah. So so it's good that IUM started this early so you can actually plan for some of the things and I can see for the past two years IUM has also come up with a lot of new you know um, putting things in place and probably in terms of curriculum you can bring that in as well so let me show you some uh, of the winners before in this category when we first started in 2018 <coughs> we had uh, UITM as the champion then, I mean, uh, the in the first place for a program in Seni Persembahan, uh, FITA. Okay, because we had, they, they have a lot of um, industry involvement and so on. And uh, like Johan was um, MMU, that also include some involvement from uh, multinational, I think if I, if I can still remember well. And the third one was UTM. So we had that in 2018 and, you know, uh, time was <laughs> good. So we had a, a grand Akri in uh, Moven Peak uh, that time. Yeah. Then in 2019, we, the winner was basically um, the first, the first place and second place was uh, Taylor's. Bachelor of Science Culinary and also Mechanical Engineering. So by the time, by 2019, the competition was already pretty stiff in terms of curriculum, you know, because uh, 2U, 2I only will not make it, <laughs> if I may say so. When, when Taylor came in with these two programs, uh, they were very unique. And for example, the culinary uh, program they had the, the industry, the hotels, and so on um, involved from the very start of the students, um, I mean, the student studies, yeah, the students' um, academic program. So, and in terms of the second one, the mechanical engineering, they had tracks. So, they had multiple pathway. So, a student can come in and just take, I mean, go on, uh, take courses and go on as a normal, not normal, the, no, uh, the, the common Bachelor of Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, or they can go into the, what they call kind of the, another track where they become apprentice at some uh, companies or even another track. So it, it was very interesting uh, and they had already graduated. So they won the second place. Uh, the third place, Usim, I can still remember this one. They won because of the, the immersion. The, they embed a lot of values uh, in terms of uh, drug eh, in their masters in counseling. So those are the winners before, but of course, when now it's already 2022, and I'm sure people have come up with very uh, good ideas and you've got a lot of uh, MOAs and MOUs that you, we can use and uh, benefit from when it comes to program development. So the theme basically illustrating um, Mohe's vision uh, in terms of curriculum is basically what we were looking for is 
innovative and of value. So we need these three things that you can actually engage students and when they go through the program, it is very meaningful and, and in the end, it is effective. Effective in, in terms of what? In developing the person, in making sure that the, that the graduate actually is a functional member of the society, they get job, they, they graduate. Uh, with you know, um, with jobs waiting or something like that, yeah. So these are the themes that illustrate the vision. But when it comes to uh, go, doing things, um, when we go to the specific part of the program, for example, you have to look at what's happening now. So it may be effective three years back, but it may not be effective, <clears throat> for example, after the pandemic and so on. Okay, so the process, um, I think many of us uh, probably if you've been listening to some of this before, you know, it's very clear, we have application, and then we evaluate and the final. So in the application uh, stage, we look at documents and evidence. So this is a part where you submit the application form. And this is a part you have to be very detailed and you have to take time to do this because the evidence will come in in the form of links and so on. You are not going to um, present the, this, uh, the evidence this, at this point. So it will go through a kind of an evaluation process with expert evaluation, uh, evaluators, but we also bring in people from all from many uh, different universities and also MQA and industry and then we kind we shortlist and we bring them in again for the final list to pitch then only we will we will um, identify the winners right so it will take about a month uh, more than a month actually from uh, looking at the documents up to the actual pitching and the award ceremony. So <clears throat> let me just share with you this picture because uh, the reason is I want to show where these people come from. For example, uh, this is for curriculum. So we have Cik Megat from uh, Talent, I think. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Andy. Uh, now he, he's a doing a lot of work with MQA, he said help. And we have Dr. Shabani from UUM. So Dr. Fahmi on the other, this end is from UTEM and we have Prof. David from Taylor's. So we also have people from Polytechnic, right? And then we, 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 we sit together and look at all the applications that come in. The only thing is for my group, as compared to Dr. Shariza's group, we do not have um, a lot of applications. At the most, we will probably reach about, I can't remember the last time, about 20 or 30, but they can, can actually receive more up to 50 and 60 documents. So it is very important that the, the documents be precise so that the evaluators will will be able to look at your document and you know straight away see what is it that you want to uh, highlight okay so for innovative curriculum we look at the design of curriculum based on outcome so you have the outcome okay we know you IUM has promote uh, you've been promoting insan sejahtera for the past few years right so maybe you want to use that as one of the uh, outcome. And you, we, we look at the focus is the person, that means the, per, the one who graduates from the program. So we look at the outcome. And then we look at how the university package the content uh, and structure the, what we call the study plan the, with innovative pedagogy and delivery and assessment, but we do not evaluate the assessment per se, as in, you know, uh, the other category, which is assessment category. We look at the full package. And we also see how the program is uh, offered in an interactive and conducive learning environment. So these are the things that we look, look out for. So basically, 
the for the innovative curriculum category we look at innovative design maybe a new program or redesign of the curriculum you already have one but now you are looking at a different way of um, offering it that successfully produces or potentially will produce okay so because some people said i just redesigned it i have not had any graduates yet but it is possible that after one or two semester that you have enough evidence to show us that it is it has the potential to produce this what we call future proof graduates right someone who can actually go into the world and whatever happened they are resilient they are change ready and so on so i i got this from um uh, this is iim right so you have this nice sejahtera academic framework so how you have that academic program there so how do you um <clears throat> design or redesign that particular that green part in order to uh, encompass all the other part of the sejahtera framework maybe this is a good i a good way to put forward your curriculum because some other universities may not have this so this is my, i think it is um, it, it has a potential that there. there is a potential of coming up with a good redesign of program maybe you have done it and it can be brought to uh, acri to win for the award right so let me also share <coughs> uh, this is the latest um, uh, initiative launched by the minister and we have started our road show we did it last the last week or, or so and we have iium people also attending the latest uh, initiative on on program so we call it excel experiential learning and competency based education landscape where we categorize programs to be under what we call real ideal care employees let me just uh, I'll, I'll show you in a bit where it is meant to nurture the resilient and change ready talent so this is uh, this particular document or playbook is already available so you may want to look at this <clears throat> this is what the ministry is doing we have the the earlier framework in uh, he 4.0 if you remember the fluid and organic curriculum structure so what um, mohe has done is put it into a framework where uh, the program can be either very much work based or very much community based or very much research or inquiry based or very much uh, personalized so maybe some of your curriculum has already had have this uh, particular um, attributes right so if it did, if it fits some of this then it will be a good uh, candidate for acri because you are um, shall i say a par with what the ministry is doing so in this particular um, um, playbook or in this particular initiative we we are looking at future ready curriculum so the program has to move towards <coughs> flexible flexibility personalized strong values embedded see that strong values embedded is rings very well in iium i'm sure built with partnerships and also with robust technology i'm i'm just uh, extracting from the page of the pages of the playbook and we have basically this particular framework that you may want to look at when once you identify some of the program for uh, acri so see <coughs> uh, your program may have may have a dominant research infused <coughs> experiential learning or already very industry driven or i think this is uh, probably your iium community resilient uh, experiential learning or even personalized so i would suggest uh, to look at the latest and then uh, look at the current uh, programs that you are probably redesigning or doing some curriculum review and so on and come up with a good one so that you can uh, we can 
put forward and let the rest of the uh, of Malaysia know that we have very good curriculum in uh, a program in IUM. <coughs> okay, so this is from uh, Ministry of Higher Education. Um, it is in Bahasa, but basically it says that for this, we define the innovative curriculum to be the academic program that actually stresses upon the design of the curriculum, like I said, based on the outcome. So it looks at, this is just what I said uh, in the slide before, right? So uh, I have already summarized that, but this is what is written in the uh, document for ACRI. Right, so the objective is to basically look at how you design uh, an academic program that will um, actually in the end produce graduan kalis masa hadapan, future proof graduates. Right, <clears throat> so uh, for this particular category, we are looking for a program of any level but it has to be accredited, of course. Certificate, diploma, degree, postgraduate studies, it can be coursework, it can be mixed mode, right? And uh, <clears throat> we look at the aims, the goals uh, of the program and the POs. We look at the program outcome, it has, and then also the content. And we look at how, it, like I said, all this is structured into the learning experience of the student and then how you evaluate the program. Okay, so for example, um, we, we, can have, um, we can have a program that actually started with field experience rather than getting into classes from the beginning. It is something different because you have um, you're putting as experiential learning as well as the basis of the program, for example. Eh? Okay, so <clears throat> the it is open to all, right? Uh, like I said, for all the program. And at this point, as of 2019, I think 2020, the application is limited to two for each institution. Uh, so we in UITM, we kind of, uh, back and back uh, Ministry of Higher Education because we had 500 programs. But then again, <coughs> like uh, JPT said, it's still two. It started with only one. Okay, now you can send in two. Maybe we can send in one at the undergraduate level, another one at the postgraduate level. Okay, so what happened? Uh, this is uh, good to share. Okay, in, in 2019, we had uh, a total of 19 uh, application. So like I said, the, the curriculum category is, uh, we, don't, we don't have to go through so many do, uh, documents, applications, right? Because it's curriculum, it's big, it's huge actually. So we had 19, we evaluated 16. So there were three that we basically, we had to put aside because it is not eligible in due to, incomplete submission, not signed by the VC or the rector and also late. Okay, the Ministry of Higher Education, basically BKA, they are very, very strict in terms of the submission deadline. So if they put it as 5 p.m. Um, 3rd March 2022, even a submission that comes in at 5.05, PM will not be entertained. So please be, uh, you know, pay attention to the submission deadline as uh, later on when they advertise. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> so two, in terms of criteria, uh, what do we look for in specific? So the number one is the rationale. So we put 10% Oh, sorry, it's not an exclamation mark. Sorry about that. 10% on the rationale. So why, why do, did you redesign? Okay, what happened? Okay, for example, now you, uh, you realize that uh, after the pandemic, people don't want to come in or whatever. This is an example. Eh? So you want to do it as ODL. You go for COPA ODL. So you redesign one existing program 
into ODL base, for example. That is why. Lah. <coughs> okay. What? What is the philosophy of the design? So when you do go for ODL, now you are opening the access to many people. So when you say access, we do not have to limit it to only SPM leavers or people with a prior uh, certification. Maybe now housewife at home can come in and learn, for example. Lah, yeah? okay. So you put in the rationale, that will be 10%. And then the approach to curriculum development. How do you develop <coughs> that? Or how do you redesign the, uh, the curriculum? Do you bring in, <coughs> uh, how do you, do you benchmark? Uh, how do you, do you bring in the alumni? So all these things, the approach, basically we are looking at your uh, process. So we want to see all the flow chart, all the outcome being aligned to your, sorry, all the assessment being aligned to the outcome and so on. So that is the basic curriculum development that we normally do for, for our uh, program. But of course, if you have one or two steps that you are you are doing that is novel, that will be very good, and that will bring that will contribute to that thirty percent of how you develop that program. <coughs> okay, then we look at the involvement and engagement. Like I said, do you bring in student alumni into the the, the development? Do you bring them early? in the development or do you just bring them in the uh, maybe in the assessment or in one of the courses or they they actually are uh, uh, involved in teaching throughout the whole program uh, that kind of thing because we we want to hear we want to see how students are um, given the opportunity to stay abreast of what is happening in the world and in the industry or even in the society. So how do you do that? So that is about 20%. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> the last one, <coughs> the, the, the biggest portion of the evaluation is the impact. This is not, you know, um, sometimes we, we, we see that Sometimes um, university, they, they don't really know how best to put in the impact. Percent enrollment, of course, we can put in the number of enrollment, but we would like to see percent of increase in enrollment. It will show some, some idea of how people are responsive, uh, responding to that program. And maybe what, by word of mouth, people are saying, oh, go for that program. Uh, in UIA, right? For example, right? And the impact can come from uh, graduate satisfaction. So, you, we always have all this CQI, whatever that we do with the uh, the students and also with the stakeholders and so on. So, put that in under the impact uh, section, where we look at awards that you've won, the graduate em employability, maybe even attrition rate how many students are basically able to have employment overseas or they can do self-employment and so on. So that shows how well the program was designed and how well the program was actually administered and how good the students, the graduates are at the end of the program. So see 10, 30, 20 and 40%. <coughs> Okay, so um, these are some of the suggestions that uh, came as, oh, sorry, as we um, evaluate and also some from our discussion, right? So when we suggest for uh, rationale and approach, uh, be clear about the objective and the approach and maybe some co um, comparison between what you do, you do in innovative in yours, right? So benchmarking or even, uh, you know, bringing in experts at the beginning to just brainstorm the program can be a very um, a part of the process that you want to do so that uh, they, that the rationale there can, you can actually involve not just 
us, the academician, we can also have people from many part of the uh, many different sectors, right, coming in to help us even with the reason or rationale for redesigning the program. <coughs> Engagement. This is very, very pertinent. <clears throat> we look at industry linkages. So all the industry modules that you have, the internship, you send students overseas, you send them to the community, all the talent exchange, or maybe you have an approach we call uh, teaching factory. Uh, I think UMT has that. Uh, um, Dr. Shariza will probably will, uh, will, uh, will uh, share with you. Or we may have for research base, we can have a living lab approach and we can have facilities and resources that support the program, um, big data labs and, and that kind of thing. And also highlight the alumni support as well, right? So then uh, when it comes to impact, again, we wanna see, um, go for increased graduate employability or keboleh, uh, not only ke, keboleh pasaran, but keboleh bekerjaan, uh, keboleh kerjaan, something like that. They can actually work on their own, right? Industry ready, so go find data on tracer assessment uh, and enhance learner experience. So like, for example, in uh, in my university, UITM, we measure student learning experience. So. We, we, this is one of the things, the data that you can bring in when uh, when you uh, put forward an application. And if there is any form of personalized learning experience, highlight that as well. And of course, uh, the increased student intake enrollment as mentioned just now, right? So kind of exciting, isn't it? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. All right, <clears throat> so now, the application form should be downloadable from Mohe website. If you go to Mohe website at the moment, there are uh, forms from 2019. So I would suggest not to go yet, but the, the forms are there. And basically there will be like four forms. One is the checklist, uh, the application form, and the, for evidence and so on. So in the form is soft copy, so you will, we will, you will have the uh, the opportunity to link a lot of your evidence. So what we did the last time is to have Google Drive for the uh, for the applicant. So some of the uh, applicants actually have their own uh, CD or whatever, but no, I don't think we do that now because I, many laptops don't have CD drive anymore, so maybe it is in a thumb drive, but we again prefer uh, soft copy on, the, on Google Drive or Dropbox or something. But I think for that particular process, it's good for us to wait for the, the uh, you know, for Mohe to put up the advertisement, the application for 2022 and see whether there are certain changes or not. See, at the, at the moment, categories are not changed, but the committee, the new committee may revise whatever that we did before, and that will be, uh, will, the up, uh, will be updated, okay? Even the two applications per university may not, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, right? Uh, may be revised. So uh, for this, let's not dwell too much. Just wait for, for what's coming. Okay. In terms, now that you have submitted, right? Uh, the winning attributes, like I said, when we look at the different universities that won the award, uh, these are basically what they did. Uh, multidisciplinary is one. We see... When you say bachelor in education, for example, uh, I'm using education because uh, that's my uh, my faculty, right? Uh, or science education, but sometimes uh, the multidisciplinary can come in when you put bring in technology heavily into the the program, right? Because now we know. Uh, the importance of technology in teaching and learning. For example, I'm just showing, uh, I'm just uh, mentioning one, but multidisciplinary can also be, we have um, 
one program, a, a twin twinning program, or even uh, we have one like, for example, fashion and art uh, and design. So fashion and also we have uh, textile, right? We have textile technology and we have fashion. So how we, we merge those two and they become multidisciplinary because people who are, who are doing fashion, they is good for them to know about textile technology as well. So that, that can be a good program. That's one. And there are many ways of put, making it multi or inter or transdisciplinary in, in some form, right? Okay. Uh, pathways and multi-track, like I said, <clears throat> that was what Taylor's did. We can have, uh, for example, let's, let me mention program uh, Chitra in UKM. Uh, they have students coming in doing the basic in first year. And then students choose their own pathway. Basically, a student may choose to go for environment. Another student may want to go for um, maybe entrepreneur. So once the student choose their, their, their uh, track or their uh, pathway, the students will be sent to the, uh, to the respected, respective uh, faculty and learn environment. And so will the other student. And then they come back for third year, for example, not come back, they will be sent to the industry for the third year and so on. So that is uh, Sarjana Muda Science Chitra in UKM. So that will that can be uh, one of the winning attribute. That was what uh, Taylor's did with the mechanical engineering. Okay, so that has that's the element of personalized is there, and the flexibility as well. So students, uh, it's not a tester package kind of thing, but they get to do the base, the foundation first, and then decide what, how, uh, what they, what uh, they want to do for the rest of the program. Okay, then uh, we uh, industry on campus. We can students can go out to the industry, but industry on campus is also a good. Uh, idea of uh, not a good idea, a good, I mean, running of the program. I think UMT has this when they bring in um, the accounting firm to be on campus and a real, uh, shall I say, real life accountants were actually teaching uh, the students, not to say that the, the lecturers are not. Uh, you know, uh, knowledgeable enough. But when you have the industry on campus, students will get that exposure and they actually know the, what, uh, hap what's happening at that point in, uh, in the industry. So we, we do not, we, we won't have students saying that when I go to the, when I go to work on, uh, when I graduate and go into the, uh, into work, into the workplace, the people said, what I know is already outdated. Right, so that is one of another winning attribute. Of course, uh, if you can show optimal community and industry involvement, now we've got so many sulam la and whatever, but if you can structure it well, as in the care program just now, that will be very good. Of course, internship and apprenticeship, uh, field experience. Internship and apprenticeship can be at the workplace, but it can also happen within the campus, right? You can have uh, internship on campus. We can have apprenticeship on campus as well, right? Uh, as long as it is related to their program. Okay? So uh, another one is collaboration and partnership. Uh, for example, we have one uh, course, for example, this is not Malaysian, eh? a course taught by seven or six experts from all over the world in one of the program. So that's wonderful because the students get to learn from the very best. And that is built into the program. That means every semester, you, you there, there will be that six expert, maybe uh, there's a rotation of experts and so on. But that particular course is one way of, uh, of getting the students to get the uh, to the real, to the experts, right? So that is one way. Or a lot of MOU, like I said, MOA, you have uh, uh, your staff going out to teach or staff from other universities coming to teach. But they, we want to see it as built into the program, not, is some, not something like 
oh, okay. semester ni kita buat lah oh, not that kind of thing right it is properly structured into the program and of course if there's evidence of global recognition uh, and awards that will be um, very much welcome and overall uh, the main thing is we want to see uh, the whole thing is built uh, you know how holistically systemically not just systematically so uh, that will be wonderful okay so too bad we have to basically uh, share pitfalls as well uh, why people don't make it to the final list right so sometimes uh, when we talk about rationale as you write your rationale down we can't find the evidence or the the narrative, the flow of argument as to why you are doing this. And the approach is less scientific. When we say scientific, we need evidence. We need uh, a kind of a, you know, uh, there is a problem and we want to solve or there is a, an issue or a concern that we want to address. This is why our program is redesigned this way something like that right and some some of the applications came in with lots and lots of activities having all these people coming in but we we didn't see the alignment to outcome uh, so the number one uh, we would say uh, weakness is the clarity of purpose in the design of that program in the curriculum that's one number one number two that thirty percent for the development, we cannot see the framework is not clear. The curricular framework, like where do you put the general studies? People always complain about MPU, for example, right? So how do you put in the general studies? How do you bring in the co-curricular as well uh, into the you know when students take co-curriculum, for example, uh, as in my university, they have credits. So which outcomes are basically addressed by the co-curriculum co uh, courses? So this, all this full framework must be clear, not just all the, uh, con uh, the, the title of courses, right? So when we look at the curriculum, sometimes it's, there's no redesign or design of new. It's just a, you know, it's just a, a simple curriculum um, document so we can't find the innovativeness and too much focus on delivery so we need also to see the theory some some of this uh, we will ask questions like what what is the underlying theory for this uh, for this particular program as well so you said you use corps uh, experiential learning you use this and so on so that will have to be um you know, uh, evidenced into what, how you deliver the program. Okay, so uh, in terms of innovation, was, uh, some of the things that we found out is that the lack of understanding of curriculum innovation. Uh, when you look at the outcomes, how do you achieve that outcome? If it's just through a lot of content and textbook-based learning, it's not innovative, okay? Or sometimes the innovation was not apparent. We we, we are tr we try our best. Some some of us we actually read your we read through the uh, the application form the application a number of times just to find some of this. What is it about this particular program is innovative, or you know what is different about this this particular program that you put forward for Acre? So we want to see some design thinking there, and. I put a, uh, that phrase down there, sustainability and scalability. Sometimes uh, there's a program that you say you bring in the industry and so on for 15 or 20 students. And then we, we want to see how are, how are you going to sustain this? You know, you have a lot of industry coming in for this particular cohort. Will it be, can it be sustained for the next three, four years? Will industry will always be uh, the industry will always be there to help you and the scalability can it be done to some other program as well? So these are 
things that are not that were not clear that sometimes reduce the marks of uh, your you know reduce the marks of your in on in your application. Okay, so <clears throat> in terms of technicality, um, sometimes we cannot find the evidence. It's not attached. It's not relevant. We click something and we found something else, right? And sometimes we click, we couldn't get anything. So it's not functioning. And we there's no rigor in, in, in uh, you know, in preparing the form. Sometimes it's not signed, it's not stamped, it's not, it's in, inaccurate keywords or term. Sometimes you, um, uh, applicants who write a lot, wrote a lot, we were trying to find what is it, you know, but there's no lack that pertinent point that we want to extract from the form. And uh, I think uh, you need to have people who edit it as well before we su submit so that it is, uh, you know, um, how do I say, readable, uh, comprehend, can easily be comprehend, uh, comprehended by us, <coughs> okay? Comprehensible. Okay, then uh, the MOU listed did not illustrate activity. Okay, you got a lot of MOU, but we don't know which of this particular MOU is related to this particular program because it's not tagged or it's not, uh, uh, you know, it's not aligned or it's not shown, illustrated how these activities in the from the MOU actually inform the program or actually was was part of the program uh, academic program right and of course lack like emphasis on stakeholder engagement when we have some stakeholder engagement or some uh, you know uh, simple one day kind of thing it's good to always document and it's good to always think when we do this with the students, which part of the learning outcomes that we have already stipulated in their program will this particular activity or event address? Then it will be clear that every time we do something for the students, it is towards them, you know, it's, it's towards uh, nurturing this person who will come out is, as an engineer, bachelor in engineering or whatever, but uh, with all the other uh, attributes that we want them to have, right? Okay, so uh, the last part, if we may, if you make it uh, to the finals, will be the pitching. So this in at this point, we see some of these things, lah. Um, not this point. For the past uh, two three years, sometimes uh, not focus on unique characteristic of the program, and we give you that particular thirty minutes, twenty minutes time, uh, not efficient use of time. And when we ask question, the inability to provide response. Sometimes this it is because. Some other people prepare the form, another person pitch. So you have to be, it has to be a very strong teamwork, right? When it comes to applying for ACRI. Okay, so these are the things that I have mentioned just now. This, uh, this is basically Mohe document that we put in. So I have uh, translated it to in the slides before. And oh yes, so that's it. Doctor, uh, I think I'm done. So I am going to stop sharing. Yeah, it's 9.55. I think I'm on time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. <laughs> I think it's very informative. So now I open the floor for Q&A session. So anyone can ask the question? Doctor Yusni, normally for curriculum, we don't get mm -hmm. many many questions because <laughs> because maybe it's hard because I think for curriculum we have to restructure and we have to pass department level first. Yes, yes. Uh, it has to go through several stages, and Prof, I'm interested to know. Um, normally, um, um, because when you we talk about the competition or the application, is come from any level, right? Like uh, it's mixed with certificates, uh, sarjana. So how you evaluate this different because the duration oh. for the program also different, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, 
No evaluation kind criteria for all. Ah, no, the, the criteria will be the same, but uh, we look at the outcome. Okay, we certificate. Ah, uh, the certificate will have a certain outcome. So of course we will not. Um, shall I say evaluate a certificate program? So far we do not have. We have. We did not receive any certificate program. We did. We will not evaluate a master's uh, one year, one and a half year program. Uh, the same way we evaluate a three, four year undergraduate program, we look at the the outcome. What do you what do you expect from a master's program? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you expect from a degree program? Uh, that's how we evaluate the the criteria is the same basically, right? Whether the you do the yeah. yes yes the percentage will be the same. Uh, it, that's not a problem. It's not a problem because okay. when we look at, for example, USIM Sarjana Counseling and Taylor's uh, Bachelor in Mechanical Engineering, it, we we can easily see where the innovation and how the the what they do is aligned to the program outcome, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so uh, uh, an undergraduate de uh, undergraduate degree will have a certain level you know at the end of it the graduates will have to do can do this and so on so it's a, a master's degree so that's how that's the main thing lah so that's why the outcome will have to be very very, very strong clear. <laughs> yes very very clear what you want to what you want to do with the with the outcome mm. yeah i think prof uh, we have um siti no kairina here dr siti no kairina maybe you yes. can What's the question? Okay, Dr. Hairina. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Prof, I'm Dr. Hairina from Kuliah of Nursing. Okay, Prof, for your information, we do have several programs in nursing. Like, we have the undergraduate program, we have the post-basic training, we have the master for... Uh, currently, we only have master in nursing and um, PhD in nursing. Soon, hmm. we're going to open up for master of advanced nursing and ODL. Hmm. Somehow, Prof, I was wondering, uh, hmm. okay, the undergraduate curriculum itself is, I mean, we have the core courses, we have these, these elective courses. Um, actually, do we have to integrate all those innovation elements to all, all these course outline? Because, you know, we have like sort of uh, lots of course outline. Is it a compulsory? It, let's say if you are interested to submit this accurate award, the application, is it a requirement that this element, the self, the innovation has to be embraced to all the course outline? I hope you ah, can. Okay. Yeah, it's very broad. You know, about the CLO itself is, is a major thing. So, we are, I, I'm not wondering. We are still like, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. Okay, I think, no, yeah. don't say that. I think you, I think, uh, in terms of nursing, it is is a is a potential for yes. award because really? yes, nursing you've got the you know the 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 technical part, the practical part, and also the yes. the on katapa the effective part, very yes. high kan. Ah, uh, so what you have to show is how your nursing program is different from another person's nursing program, for example not the normal uh, thing that people do. So, for example, uh, for example, uh, I used to listen to one of the uh, uh, comment from one of the evaluators. Uh, they said, if you go to, uh, pardon me for using this example, uh, yeah? uh, if, if, you, if you do, oh, excuse me, uh, if you do this, if you do this, uh, look at the graduates from USIM, medical graduates from USIM, they have one thing different from many other universities. I'm not saying UIA is not lah. Because they have this, bila dia bercakap dengan patient, dia akan uh, advise ataupun dia boleh sampai to the point mengajar patient to solat, for example. You understand or not? Okay. So that is built into the curriculum. And that is how they are different. Mm -hmm. So that is what we want to see. So, but you, we, we, we are not, your courses may be very innovative in terms of delirium and so on. Maybe you can go to Dr. Shariza's, uh, uh, bring it to Dr. Shariza's uh, uh, category, for example. But we want to see the whole program. How will, in the end, people see your nurses different 
from uh, another universities, uh, you know, Bachelor of Nursing. You know, because kind of people will say, hey, I, I want nurses from UIA lah. They are so well trained. They are very, uh, not only they are good, but they are very, uh, kata apa, uh, berhemah, what kind of, well, how did they do that? Look at their program. Uh, for example, lah kan? so let's say in your program, there is one instant where you have, um, um, what do you call it? An attachment for the nurses to go to to apa ni, to be with um, senior citizens or something like that lah. Tapi throughout the semester, they kena jaga the senior citizen for example. Because my daughter in the UK as a doctor, she has to, dia ada mak angkat yang dia kena jaga throughout the semester. Dia memang kena pergi and check the on the this uh, uh, this senior citizen. So, dia punya empathy pada patient is different once they learn that. If that is built into your program, that will be very good. Hmm. Faham ke? Uh, okay. It's not only about the delivery dalam yeah, dalam ah uh, uh, bukan kahut-kahut sajalah sorry ya. Yeah. <laughs> macam tu. And sustainability eh. Yeah, ya, yeah, what how how you how do you get this students to be that that excellentness that you want them to be and how how can they be how how, how what did you do that they they be this UIA nurses ah yang macam tu so dia kena they have to it has to be aligned to what IAUM uh, pun as uh, as a, as an institution as well that's why i show that sejahtera framework you must not run away from your framework too uh, if if i were you lah because i am an alumni of UIA so i know the strength <laughs> kalau saya isi borang you saya pandai <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, so that, 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 hmm. Let's say lah, if we were about to submit a document for this award, meaning that, do we have to outline all the courses throughout the four years? Like we have undergraduate, we have four years like that. And then for uh, our post basic, we have like six months training. So meaning that you would like to see all the structure. And the structure. The the CLO, meaning that you are not interested to see all the teaching sites whatsoever, but the structure only, right? Yeah, we will ask you to put in the structure and then you are going to highlight that under innovation, under whatever. So you may want to bring out one of the courses that, that's, uh, uh, that's very different, that's where the innovation is. Okay, like uh -huh. I said, for example, I, 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 let's say during the first semester, instead of they all going to class, there is one course where they just go to the community saja. Uh, for example, uh, yeah. so uh -huh. that particular course you want to highlight. I you see. see? Ah, that's the difference. Yeah, because currently I'm doing like an elective start, uh, and like, like elective course out loud whereby I collaborate with Magna. So in this collaboration, meaning that we have the partnership, and then sometimes I always make sure that my students call back their seniors before conducting a program, meaning that they have this attachment with the alumni. Just, just an example. That's the reason I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so all these things that you do with Magna, with whatever. It is it, it should be properly structured in the program rather than like I said kan sometimes we do this tau come this semester eh jom jom lah this semester kita buat ni uh, jom jom that, 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 that's not the one that we are looking for because this is a program this is a, a curriculum mm. uh, but you can have uh, different uh, different people coming in this semester for this course we will have makna that semester for this course we will have a different oh, one okay. no. uh, but it is uh, uh, yes but okay. but they always have some form of uh, that particular engagement whenever uh, students sit for that course that's always the uh, that's always the engagement so All right. that, uh, that's the kind of thing lah. oh thanks right. prof Okay, so no, yeah. not not just textbook or, or what we call content centric kind of thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. True. Thank you, Dr. Kairina. I think it's very good questions, and everyone can benefit from it. 
Uh, all right, uh, so because of the time constraint, I think we have to proceed with the second speaker. Uh, but before that, let me introduce our speaker, uh, second speaker yang berbahagia, Dr. Shariza Mat Sharif. Dr. Shariza Mat Sharif is a lecturer in the field of fish genetics at the Faculty of Fisheries and Food Sciences, University Malaysia Terengganu UMT. He is currently the Director for Innovation and Talent Development Centre. Uh, UMT. His research interest is on the genetic improvement of aquaculture species uh, through breeding and molecular approaches. In teaching and learning, his focus is on applying simulation-based learning and alternative assessment in fisheries and aquaculture. He has developed several teaching kits based on simulation-based learning, and one of the teaching kits called Fish Breed Pro has won first place in the Anugerah Pemikiran dan Reka Bentuk Semula Pendidikan Tinggi Malaysia 2017. Some of the teaching kits have been used to train farmers on fish breeding and genetics for the genetic improvement of aquaculture species. And he was the recipient of the 13 Anugerah Academic Negara for the teaching category, Applied Science 2019. And he has been invited as a selection panel and jury for Anugerah Khas Menteri Pendidikan Malaysia Akri, as well as UMT Teaching Innovation and Competition and UMT Teaching Excellence Awards. He has also been invited as a trainer for UMT and several universities on assessment, Google application and teaching portfolio. Now we are welcome uh, Dr. Shariza Mat Sharif. Thank you very much, Dr. Yusni, <coughs> for the uh, introduction. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning uh, to all of you. Also to uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Azia, our uh, speaker just now. Uh, <coughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi syurahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa hlun uqdatan min lisan yufam qawni. So <coughs> we ask uh, for Allah, hope that... Uh, he gave a smooth present. Uh, he gave uh, this uh, session a smooth presentation and uh, hope to give uh, all the uh, uh, participant understanding regarding uh, the session for uh, the two session for today. And um, let me share my screen. Okay, all right. Can you see the slides? Huh? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Well, <clears throat> uh, I would like to thank uh, Prof. Dr. Azia for uh, explaining the, 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 the first process. So, as you all know, uh, for every uh, category, the process is similar in which you need to prepare uh, a report, a, a, a folio, a fill up the form, and then it will be evaluated. And uh, then those who attain a certain level of marks will be eligible for the final uh, pitching session. Uh, today, what I will be explaining will be similar uh, to what uh, Prof. Uh, Azia uh, has explained. Um, the only thing is, the one that I will cover is for the transformative teaching. So I'll give you a brief introduction about what uh, transformative teaching is, and then uh, the process on how to, uh, or what are the things that uh, are being uh, considered in uh, preparing the form, and what are the common mistakes that uh, has been uh, encountered when we start to evaluate the uh, project that has been submitted. But uh, before this, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to give uh, uh, credit and to appreciate uh, several people. Uh, the first is um, when uh, I was the first uh, participant for the uh, APRS, uh, the one that Prof. Azia was mentioning, and uh, 
uh, I got first place for this transformative teaching. And then after that, I was being uh, invited by KPT. So um, I would like to take, to take this open, opportunity to thank uh, KPT for inviting me as a panel. And from then on, I was uh, very grateful because I was uh, partnered with uh, Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Nur Hayati from U UTM and also Dr. Ma'an from UIA. They were the two uh, individuals in the uh, transformative category panel at that time uh, whom uh, mentored me a lot in uh, evaluating the, uh, the uh, documents and also to uh, Prof Azia, huh? because I still remember uh, Prof at that time, uh, the first uh, ACRI in 2018, when we start to evaluate uh, the transformative and alternative assessment were combined together into one uh, category, uh, but break into two. Uh, we need to revisit back at around 11 o'clock uh, that time, Prof. Azia was there and uh, explaining to us and uh, we revisit back all these uh, documents for alternative assessment and we finish up until about 1.15 uh, in the morning uh, just to uh, go through back again and uh, evaluate and determine the winners. Okay? Uh, why I highlighted this is uh, to show to all of you how stringent uh, this uh, award where it has been uh, evaluated by several panels as uh, Prof. Azia showed uh, in her category, there are uh, several panels similar to uh, transformative. And uh, apart from that, uh, we really scrutinize all the documents uh, to make sure that uh, no things uh, unattended, okay. And if there are any discrepancies, we will be, we will discuss back again. And uh, to highlight another thing is, last year, uh, last uh, in 2019, for this transformative category, there is only one winner. So out of the five uh, contestants who entered the final, only one were eligible to be given the. Uh, award. So again, this uh, award is uh, different from the normal uh, innovation competition that uh, most of uh, uh, the academician entered. Yeah? Uh, so this is just to highlight uh, the, the stringency, but the purpose of uh, highlighting this is not to scare academician, but uh, to highlight the importance of innovating your approach in teaching and learning with the focus of developing students and not just merely for uh, award because the one that has been scrutinized is the content of the write-up and also the purpose. So going back to transformative uh, teaching, so in this category, transformative teaching is about the transformation of your teaching method. So this transformation can be either in terms of interactive lectures or non-lecture. So when we talk about interactive lecture, that means we are talking about active teaching as well as active learning. So going outside from the normal, traditional lecture-based classroom. So how do you transform your delivery, your teaching and learning approach to make it more interactive, increase student engagement? So it can be done in two methods. So the purpose, the focus of this uh, category is on the teaching method, okay? And the method is proven to achieve at least one learning outcome. So in this category, your delivery can target for two or three learning outcomes. 
But it doesn't necessarily be like that. It can be only one. Because as you all know, in one course, when you are teaching a course, you will have several learning outcomes. So it is not necessary that for this competition, you need to, attain, to achieve all the learning outcomes in your courses. So only one is sufficient. So when we talk about uh, teaching method, so the teaching method can be lecture-based. So lecture-based can be face-to-face -face and we have experienced two years uh, of online learning due to pandemic. So it can also be interactive lectures based on online. So it can be both. Uh, we don't know yet what is the focus for this year's approach, but previously it is focused on either being done using face-to-face -face or online. Another one is non-lecture approach in which you don't give lectures. There is instruction. Through that instruction, to your through your design, the student will be able to follow your delivery and they gain the skills, the intended skills, the intended outcome through that particular approach. So that is two major approaches that you can uh, use, either through your active uh, lectures or non-lecture method. So in this uh, transformative teaching category, four key evaluation criteria will be evaluated. One that is rational. Again, just like uh, Prof. Azia mentioned just now. So what is the motivation, issues, or problem that initiated the teaching approach? Now, <clears throat> difference from curriculum is that this focuses on your teaching approach for your class, for your course, not for the whole program. So if you have a certain method of delivery okay, for your classroom, then this is the category that you can enter. Now, another one, 40% of the marks will be on your approach. So how do you design? How do you deliver? the approach that you have developed. And another one for sure, once you have created a certain approach and you have applied them in the course, we would like to know how students involve in the teaching and learning process. So how do they learn from your approach? Okay, And the effectiveness, how much does your approach enables to improve the student skills or the intended learning outcome. So we will go through this uh, as we look on to the form. So in terms of the rational, so we are going to look into the main issues that sparks the project that you develop. And what is actually your objective developing this project. So the second one is the alignment of your approach with the learning outcome. So you have a certain problem. How does this align with your problem? And the problem must resides related to your intended learning outcome. The approach will be assessed based on the novelty whether this is a new one, newly created, or it is adopted from a certain method and you modify uh, to suit your classroom or your subject. And when you develop this, what are the fundamental aspects of the learning that you have incorporated? So again, what are the learning theories that you use to create this uh, method that you develop? And your strategy, 
That means your instructional design. How do you initiate and how do you run the project, the delivery to the students? And the third one is the ability to increase student involvement. So is there any active learning happens? And if there are, how does the learning occurs? And you need to show the evidence of all those things that you mentioned. And finally, the impact, the effect of the uh, learning outcome, the effect to the student motivation. Sometimes the approach motivates the student to engage and learn more. And another one is the impact in terms of can it be spread? Can it be used or applied either in another course or for another purpose? And does your method can improve or cut the course to run the, the subject or it shortens the time for the student to attain the skills? And does it involve any stakeholders or it gives benefit to the stakeholders? Now, when you download the form, okay, uh, we are waiting if there will be a new uh, format or a new form, but this is based on 2019. Now, the first part is the rationale. So what are the main issues and also what are or is the objective of your project? So just to give you some guidelines, this rationale, Okay. can be due to the attainment of your learning outcome. Okay. Maybe previously you found that your current approach couldn't enable the student to achieve that intended learning outcome. Maybe previously only 50% or 40% able to achieve it. So now you're trying to develop a method in which you can increase 70% or maybe 100% students can achieve the intended learning outcome. Or sometimes, previously, when you do, you realize that the approach doesn't match with the level of the learning domain. Take, for example, if you're focusing on cognitive, we have uh, level one until level six. In some cases, your intended level is at level four analysis but previous approach only enables the student to acquire up until level two. So based on that issues, you are trying to develop method that can enable the student to achieve the cognitive level four. And also for psychomotor, also for effective. And there are some projects where they notice that previously it was not aligned to the learning outcome. So now due to that, they try to improve the approach so that it can align to the intended learning outcome. Or your rationale can be the student performance. Previously, not many students are able to achieve good marks. So now you're trying to deliver an approach so that you can improve the student's performance. In some cases, due to qualification, certain programs, they have a certain standard to apply. And when this professional body changes a certain standard, then this might be the main issues on why you need to develop new teaching method. Okay, and another one is due to national policy. Uh, just now, Prof. Azia was uh, mentioning about the, the new uh, approach in program. So maybe due to this, you are trying to develop approach that can tailor to the current national requirement or national policy. The other one may be to, due to the future job skills. Okay? So due to a certain requirements, you are trying to devise method to train the student to acquire that skills. And in some cases, Every time when we 
end up our semester, we try to get feedback from students. And some feedbacks, comments from the student made us think about the approach and give a suggestion on how to improve the teaching and learning for, uh, for the future. So these are some of the rationals that uh, most of the candidate put up. And if you have all this, uh, not all, uh, maybe part of your rationale is uh, within this scope. So this is some example that you can put up. Okay, these are some, uh, just to show you some examples, you can have a look at World Economic Forum. Previously, uh, with the current one, we have 2022 uh, skills. And the other one now currently is the top 10 skills of 2025. So maybe your approach uh, is to enable the student to prepare the students for the future skills. Just to give you some examples. Now, the second part, the E part, is your approach. So is your approach aligned to the uh, intended learning outcome? So you need to explain, how does your approach enables or align with the intended learning outcome that you're trying to address? And E2, ask about the novelty of your project. So is it designed by your own? Or is the approach adapt from other approach? Or you just use an existing approach or method without any modification. For example, we see some, uh, to give you some, uh, a simple example, people using uh, Padlet, people using Kahoot. So if you're just using them in the normal process, then there's no uh, modification. The only modification is in the question that you ask, uh, but the approach is still similar. So if you use that kind of approach, then your novelty might be less. But if you modify a certain approach, okay, trying to tailor it to your classroom, then the marks will be slightly higher. But highest mark will be given if you, the project is very novel, you design it on your own. Of course, then you might be asking how to design our own because everything is already there, uh, has already been applied. Take for example, game-based learning. So you're trying to create a game, okay? Yes, game-based learning is not new, but the novel thing is your game. If you create your own game, you create your own uh, kits, Okay, which has never been created by other educators, then that is the novelty. Okay? There's none other design being created like what you create. Then the novelty will be high. So the next question in the form is, uh, what is the underlying learning theories? So, you need to check if, uh, I know that some uh, educators, they are very passionate, uh, they listen to the students' feedback and they try to improve. But during that uh, initiative, when they try to improve, they don't really tailor to the learning theories. But I'm very confident that anything that you do related to teaching and learning, is actually related to a certain learning theories. So for those of the candidate who may not see all this, so you can re-look back and map your approach. What are the learning theories that, I, that is uh, similar or that I use with this one? To some educators, they already have the learning theories that they want to apply. Okay, for example, okay, I'm going to use constructivism learning theories. My approach is to create, is to allow them to create their own uh, content so that they are able to teach others. So using this method, 
they are able to acquire the knowledge and it will it retains longer in their memory so some candidate develop that based on the theories before they conduct the approach but some they created it but actually there are learning theories that underlines now for those who are in that category make sure you don't put the wrong or you don't map with the wrong learning theories but again now as you know uh, since i have explained this it is recommended for those of you who wants to start up start off by looking back at what are the learning theories that can be adopted okay but those who have already an initiative or project so try to map back now e4 is related to explain your approach method strategy or technique yeah in the process in the teaching and learning so here what the panel would like to see is a step by step process what did you do the first step followed by the second step take for example you start off with a flip classroom then continue with the instruction the student will have a discussion the third student will uh, conduct a task and then the student will present so these are the process that we would like to see when you submit your application and the type of learning it will be better if you can mention now this process is based on problem based learning or simulation based learning okay or collaborative learning there are many types of uh, learning strategies or maybe game based learning <clears throat> so that the evaluators can really relate okay your approach is based on problem based learning so once we understand that this is the approach we can really see whether your approach really is a problem based learning okay and the duration how long does it takes to run your approach is it uh, two weeks or one month or four lecture uh, session or three lab session and how do you assess the outcome that was made so you have the approach you you did the approach the student go through the process of your teaching and learning and strategies now how do you assess the output so this must be put into this e4 and section f will be student engagement so here is about how the student learn on e is how do you design and deliver your approach so you said that my approach is based on constructivism learning theories they de develop their own thinking and understanding in order to do that the second section you do that based on problem based learning these are the steps so on f since you have developed the strategy now how did the student learn so here is the explanation related to do they learn by doing uh, is there an involvement in collaborative learning peer learning some example okay now some of the uh, contestant when they put up the answer is very straightforward which is not recommended okay if you see in this uh, aspect how far this transformative project increased student engagement and uh, in the learning experience in the aspect of cognitive or behavior or affective now we encountered some when they answered in terms of cognitive they just answered student increase their knowledge in this topic so this is is not what it means uh, this is not the answer to what it means by student involvement in the learning 
uh, in their learning experience in terms of cognitive. So you can explain, yeah? it would be better if you explain that through this approach, the student needs to discuss among their peers. Okay? Through discussion, uh, those who understand more will try to explain to their colleagues who were not uh, able to understand. Now, through this, their cognitive level increase in which they acquire this, uh, the, the understanding of this topic through discussion. So uh, this is the example of what I'm trying to tell you uh, to answer this compared to to this method, the knowledge increase in this topic. Okay, and you set the specific topic. So that is too straightforward, but it doesn't explain the process on how the student learn. And uh, if you mention here, then please provide the evidence, uh, pictures, videos, okay, showing whether discussion has been made. When I say discussion, if your approach is such a way that they discuss, there are also methods in which they learn through online. So provide the evidence showing the learning process that occurs okay, by the student. And the last part is the impact. Okay, so one of the question is how far does this transformative project okay, helps in improving the learning outcome? So in order to answer this, you can provide uh, data in terms of the, uh, your assessment results. Some you can uh, provide evidence in terms of student reflection. Okay, and if you conduct a survey analysis, you can also provide survey analysis, okay, pre and uh, post or before and after, and also picture or video activity. Now, why in some form of evidence you show picture or video? If you say that you're trying to improve, okay, the student not only improve their cognitive level, but they are more motivated then if you are able to provide videos showing that they are very passionate in uh, involving in the discussion, uh, asking you questions and so on and so forth. So show that to show the changes in the behavior. Okay, so these are the things that you can add in. Uh, most of this answer will be in terms of your data that you obtain through all these forms of assessment. Okay, in terms of how can this initiative or project or your delivery can be applied okay, on different fields or other institution. Now, in this case, the panel would like to see whether your approach is only being applied for your own course or it has also been applied for other course. Okay. And whether this approach has also been applied to other institutions, not only in IIUM, but as well as in other universities or maybe agency or industry. <clears throat> okay. And in terms of impact uh, based on course time, you can provide a figure how much cost that you have reduce using your own uh, this approach and how much time uh, most of the uh, candidate that we see among them they say that they were able to reduce the time from four weeks to two weeks okay to attain the learning outcome so that is among the impact or whether the approach improve classroom management. Now, what does it mean improve classroom management? Previously, you don't have any lab 
based on uh, in your approach. But because you develop that approach, it changes and transform your class into having lab session. So before this, your, your lab is only discussion on a certain, certain topic or certain issues. But now, based, using problem-based learning, you are able to have an official four lab session. So that really transformed your classroom from not having any lab session or content for the lab session. Now you're having a lab session with proper content to allow the student to achieve the intended learning outcome. And does the output able to benefit others? Take for example, uh, there are some approaches where the student develop their own videos and they post in YouTube or in Instagram. And uh, part of the uh, method would need the student to see how many viewers and who are the viewers. So the initial project to increase the student understanding or the student skills, but at the same time, it also benefits the society where the society also learns from the content that has been created by the students. So that is another aspect of impact. Okay? So rather than the impact to the student itself, but it also gives impacts to the society. The society gets benefit. Now, I would like to give you an example. Take, for example, if to some, they have this uh, sulam. Okay, maybe Sulam based on your approach may be suitable for immersive learning. But if you see that some of the method uh, of Sulam is more for transformative, then uh, I would like to highlight some example of what does it mean by it give benefit to the society. Like in the cases where you let the student to develop content to teach a certain community. The focus is on the student. You want the student to learn. So in order for them to learn, they need to develop content. They need to teach others. So by teaching others, they acquire the knowledge. But at the same time, your approach enables the society to also learn. So these are among the example of approach in which rather than having a normal classroom, you're talking uh, disseminating the knowledge but the student disseminate the knowledge to the society but through that approach the student gain a lot of understanding skills on your particular topic so as a summary these are some guidance for your preparation okay uh, the rational uh, as I've highlighted in the uh, previous slides Okay, the relevance of the uh, approach. Uh, don't forget about the learning design and the process that you have uh, created, you have designed. Okay, the steps, the duration, and uh, how the assessment was made. And another part is on the student side, how they learn from your approach and the evidence that you can provide okay, to show that your approach really benefits and meet the objective of your uh, strategy. And now for the last part, we are going to go for the weaknesses. <clears throat> uh, Prof. Azia uh, mentioned uh, is uh, true. Eh? For transformative, in 2018, we received 65 uh, applicants. Okay, so we need to scrutinize 65 uh, applica application. In 2019, there are about, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 80 application. Okay, so we have about 10, uh, 12 of us uh, checking all those uh, roughly about 80 application. So we hope that this year, with uh, two years of uh, experience due to the pandemic, uh, we believe that 
a, the number will increase uh, this time around okay with new novelty new approach uh, in terms of uh, online learning as well as face-to-face. Uh, -face. <clears throat> okay, so among the weaknesses that we uh, detected is in terms of novelty. Okay, the novelty is very low in some cases, not all. Okay, what do you mean low? Most of the uh, candidate adopt the current technique. Uh, take for example, Okay, with the current method, you are using Google Drive. Okay, as what others are using. So, there's no novelty. Uh, you are using videos uh, for your lectures. So, having videos, you are not giving lectures in the classroom, but you prepare videos. So, that is common uh, in, uh, in most uh, teaching and learning process. Second, we notice that there are some good approaches, but the candidate was not able to show the uniqueness of the method or approach. Uh, in some cases, for example, they are using Padlet, but they fail to explain what is the difference of the way they use the Padlet compared to other people who are using the Padlet also for teaching and learning. So comes in in terms of the write-up. The second is on the focus of the project. So the focus of the approach is on the student, okay, not on other uh, groups of people. So some of the method did not focus on the student. Okay, we have seen approaches, but the method of teaching is intended for the lecturers okay, and for teachers. So what we want is the approach for students, even though they say that, yes, this is a program where the lecturers are the student, of course, but the main focus here is the approach must be for a certain course okay, uh, in an academic program. If you have a certain program that is not an academic program, you have a certain workshop and you have this approach. So it is a good one, but it doesn't reflect or it is not uh, the one that we want to see for this uh, transformative teaching. Okay, Some, they have this... Uh, Program Pemindahan Ilmu, eh? a knowledge transfer program to a community. So they did this program, the training, and they developed this approach and they submit for this application. So that is not the project that we want to see. The one that we want to see is the one that has been applied in the classroom uh, for a certain course. And the third one is the constructive alignment. So the approach doesn't align with the intended learning outcome some of the approach doesn't align with the level. Okay, uh, you, the candidates say that they try to achieve uh, cognitive level five, but the approach only allows them to achieve cognitive level three. And in some uh, application, the learning outcome was not stated. So marks will be reduced because we don't do or we don't create the approach just to have fun. We create an approach to solve a certain issues. The fun will come later. Once the student really enjoys and obtain the intended skills, the fun will come in. Okay? But we don't create things just for the sake of having fun okay it's not wrong to to create things that that is fun but things that we need to consider is what are the issues or the learning outcome that you want to address now in uh, 2019 we made a resolution among our groups that any application that puts in the issues 
students find the classroom boring will not be counted. Okay, uh, not, not eliminated, but will not be given marks. What are the main issues uh, that initiated this project? But the fund, okay, when I say fund, don't get me wrong, uh, we are not against with fund, but it is not proper when you put the fund as your main objective of your approach. Okay, to make the classroom more interesting and fun. Okay, so focus on the issues related to student performance, uh, learning outcome. Okay, and at the same time, then you can incorporate that fun part inside your approach. Now, another one is the report write-up. Some does not answer the question. Okay, I give you an example uh, uh, related to this. There was one project which is very, very good. We wanted, the panel wanted this project to enter the pitching session, but we couldn't give a lot of marks. It has been uh, checked by four evaluators. Uh, the two evaluators is the extra evaluators just to confirm, okay, the, is our decision right or wrong of not allowing this candidate to pitch? They created a board game, which is very good, very novel. Uh, it has not been created by other uh, uh, educators, but the whole process of write-up is like this. i give you an example. Tell us the approach uh, uh, of the process. We were hoping to see the approach will be step one. Uh, students are being gathered into groups and then they need to do this. Second, in this session, they will play this one followed by the other part. But the whole process is this project has won award in Korea. This project has won award in US competition. This project has been published, has published four journals. Okay. So the output is not related to the student. The output is related to the performance of the product. Okay, and then when we uh, when the question asks the impact, the impact is for Q uh, two Q two papers and two Q one papers. So it does not answer the question. Okay, how does the student perform? Okay, this board has been used by 200 students. Okay, three different classrooms. Uh, so, some sort of like, uh, kita tanya itik, jawab ayam. So, please be, be clear. Do, we know that the project is good. You achieve a lot of awards in terms of the project, but don't engross with the performance of the of the, uh, the product that won award until every answers that you, uh, everything that you answered is related to the performance of that particular uh, initiative related to what you obtain from it. Okay, the next one is the evidence. Some of the evidence were not provided. When you say that it increase students' motivation, but there's no videos, there's no student reflection. What we only see is student performance. Previously, 20% got 80 marks. And now, 50% got 80 marks and above. But you see that it increased their motivation. So the results of the uh, assessment does not really reflect the student motivation. Of course, you can say that there, there is a, that is the student motivation when you see that the student increased their marks. But we want to see other evidence. Okay? Do they involve in the discussion? How do they prepare for their learning? So these are the things. It will be good if you have some interviews with the students and the student answer. But don't fabricate 
by telling that, okay, I need to create a video because I'm entering the competition. Can I have this script? Can you talk about it for, for me to prepare a video to submit next week? Please don't do that. Okay. Generally, we do these videos earlier when we try to initiate because our passion is to see did I really improve the student's performance? Okay. So these are the things that is related to evidence. And again, the evidence was not related or relevant. As I said, what is the impact? So some of the candidate provide here, these are the four journals impact from this initiative. So the impact will be on the students, as I told you, uh, the uh, classroom management, okay? whether it uh, gives impact to the course. Uh, the next one is the technical. Some provide the wrong link. So when we try to click, it cannot go to that particular link. It goes to another uh, section. And some of these uh, link were unable to assess. So uh, I would like to reiterate what uh, the, our head panel mentioned. We will not going to ask the candidate, contact the candidate, excuse me, can you change your privacy link to uh, anyone with the link? Uh, no. The moment we cannot open, then we will assume that there is no evidence or we cannot see. The report is not uh, enough. So you will get less marks for it. Uh, just like Prof. Azia uh, mentioned just now, uh, KPT is very strict in terms of time. Even if you submit at 5.05, .05, they will not accept. Similar to this. So we will not ask you, please, can you change back your uh, link to ensure that we can access? No. If we cannot access, then we, we will assume there is no evidence or we are unable to read. That means you don't provide them. So if that thing gives marks, then there will be no marks. And the final one is the pitching. So the final stage. Now, some information presented was not in line. Maybe eh, because we detected in, in uh, one or two candidates in which the person who created that was not the one who presented. Maybe because he or she was not confident in making a good presentation. So he or she asked, the colleague to present, maybe because the, the, the colleague presented very well, able to present very well, but the colleague is just a co-partner or researcher uh, involving in the project. So he or she is not into it uh, as what the main candidate uh, involved. So they weren't able to present very well during the pitching. Uh, second, as what the Prof. Uh, Azia mentioned, it was not well planned. Okay? Um, if the time given for 15 minutes to present, suddenly they just realize they have finished 10 minutes just to give introduction. Whereas they have another three quarter of their presentation to finish up within that another five minutes. Okay? And some, the flow, when I say not well planned, is the flow of the presentation. And the third one, time runs out due to technical problem. As you know, when you present, sometimes you want to add in videos to show the uh, impact or to show the activities. But during that time, when they click, the video were unable to operate. Uh, so these are uh, the few common mistakes that happens in the during this uh, pitching. And last, regarding this, uh, the overall, we also detect that some projects, not some, uh, a few projects, what we consider as half-baked or half-cooked. Okay, uh, What does it mean by half-baked or half-cooked? They created the uh, 
uh, approach. It has only been tested in one session and then straight away they give the form for the student to uh, provide feedback. And of course, the feedback will be, yes, I can easily understand because you teach and then you do this uh, initiative, you assess them by having some quiz and then suddenly you say that my approach is very effective and it has only been tested once. Okay, uh, This happens when that particular project, when we check and uh, scrutinize, there is no repetitive okay, being done. Now, it's good if you really improve the, the student's performance okay, by doing one, but it must be well-planned. Most of the project has been done many sessions. So they can really see whether the initiative really improves students' performance or not. Okay, I would like to end up my presentation with this uh, slide. Huh? This slide, uh, I got it uh, from uh, Prof Karim when he came to UMT to give a talk uh, in 2017. Now, the purpose of having all this innovation, okay, is not to win award. The purpose of creating, developing new innovative method is to improve ourselves to become scholarly teachers. Okay, what does it mean by scholarly teachers? When we created something, just like doing research, we review to see whether is this approach has been done before? Okay, what are the advantages of having this approach? Okay, so you do some literature search so that you, uh, you gain a certain knowledge regarding the approach that you want to do. From that approach, you gain knowledge on the learning theories that resides, that underlines the approach. So not just to, to enter the competition, but apart from developing, you gain through the learning process on your own, it makes you understand better in terms of the learning theories, learning strategies. So apart from the student improve, you as well improve on the knowledge on teaching and learning. Okay? If the focus of the innovation is along that line, inshallah, the, there will be no problem that the project is a very good project that allows you to be recognized for an award. <clears throat> okay? um, because we can see from the uh, participation, there are people who really into it and there are people who just submit to give it a, uh, call that, uh, to submit with just what we call as the half cook or half big. But don't get me wrong when I talk, uh, when I mention about this, because this is not to scare you that, okay, I'm just doing it once. I need to do it for three years or five years, then only I can submit. It's not, uh, it's not that way, okay? But the thing is, understand what you are trying to do. Check whether the things that you do has been done by others. Okay. really assess to determine the effectiveness of your approach to the students. These are the key elements that allows you to enable you to have the chance uh, to enter the final stage and hopefully to win this uh, the category. So with this, uh, I would like to thank you Again, IIUM for inviting me and thank you to all uh, participants for your attention. So uh, I open this for any uh, question.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sharisa. Yeah, I think we open the floor for Q&A session. Every, anyone can ask the question? Either you would like to voice out or just type in the chat box, it's okay. So Dr. Shariza, I just uh, would like to know, this application, is it on individual basis or per course? Because sometimes one course is taught by different lecturers where maybe different lecturers adopt different approach in order to approach, uh, I mean, to achieve learning outcome, right? Okay. It can be individual, it can be groups. So for the groups, it has to be the same method applied by ah, it all, depends. all the members, right? Yes, because there are some, some approaches where uh, the, the initiative was being done by groups. By groups. Okay? Uh, I give you one example. Uh, there are some where it has been applied in one course, but mm. to develop that project, they need to design to develop this uh, augmented reality. So they gathered one lecturer to develop this uh, augmented reality. Okay, there's one who are expert in game-based learning. So another members will try to design the game-based approach. Okay, and the subject is being applied to another lecturer. So that is what uh, we, group, we encountered now uh, when they apply as in groups. Okay, let's uh, see if we have questions. And uh, you have mentioned that, uh, I think, is it 2019 or 2018? There is There was only one winner, right? Uh, in 2019, there's only one winner. Like to share what, what's the approach that the winner... Uh, the, uh, I, I, can't, uh, yeah. I can't remember uh, the, the approach, it? but it, it was won by UUM. UUM. Uh, but surprising, UUM. right? Out of 80 applications, just one winner. Yeah, so, <laughs> five five uh, shortlisted. were selected or uh, shortlisted for the final but only mm. one because mm. during the finals they also have these minimum marks oh, minimum marks okay uh, all right so there is no achieve... no first prize no second prize for this uh, category so but it for doesn't other mean... categories yes right the, the... yes uh, it's the same for other categories oh, okay. even if for example uh, out of these five uh, finalists mm. you know that who is number one, number two, number three? But if the uh, the number two or number three or even number one didn't achieve the the Minimum. level, yeah, so, hey, I can just say example. Huh? Just say example. Mm -hmm. In order for you to consider to be considered, you must attain a marks of uh, seventy. Mm -hmm. So if you don't achieve seventy, you will not be considered a winner. Okay. Ah, and it so happened during that time, uh, UUM is the only one that achieved pass. the the pass the, the passing mark. Yeah, during yeah, the surprise. ah during Very the tough, right? yes the during evaluation. the evaluation of the report also there is a certain minimum uh, marks. So five five shortlisted for pitching and final stage. Yes. Um, so for participant, uh, before uh, I forgot, there is attendance links in the chat box that you can fill in and also evaluation form link. Another, another one mm -hmm. that I would like to share is uh, mm -hmm. previously, uh, sometimes the marks was deducted, uh, not deducted, the, the candidate did, was not able to impress the panel. What, what, what do I mean by that? The project is good. Uh, it was conducted without any lectures. Uh, all the topics were created in which the student developed the content and teach each other. So along the whole semester, it was conducted uh, in which the lecturer acts as a facilitator. But during the presentation, uh, I can say the way it was presented is, okay, through this method, it is similar by giving lectures. 70%, uh, let's say, I can just say, 70% of the student uh, obtained 80 marks and above. Uh, and similar to previously when I did giving lectures. Oh, okay. 70%. So what is the difference? So there's no impact actually. The approach is good. Uh, so what I can say that actually there are 
some other improvement that has been attained, but the candidate failed to explain on the other aspect. So the candidate only explained that, okay, I have proven that without giving lectures, I can uh, allow uh, the student were able to, uh, to attain similar performance as though I'm giving lectures. Yeah. Uh, so the way you present also is very important. So we have to show some improvement. I mean, the, the significant uh, contribution yes. rather than before, right? Correct. So, uh, uh, yeah, maybe uh, anyone, any question? Maybe everyone prepare or start thinking what a kind of the method that we have to start now. And then, so for application, it's the same. Eh? Um, yes, application is the same. And so to, to no, I don't think to application per institution, right? Is uh, it no, two? no, no. This one no. is, is uh, open, depending on how many uh, the institution. So no limit. Submit. No limit. Yes. Uh, no limit. Uh, okay. uh, one, one thing that I would like to highlight again, during this two year of pandemic, okay, uh, this is this is based on my uh, experience of uh, being the panel for other competition. But uh, I'm mentioning this because I foresee similar things will happen if ACRI is conducted this year and mm -hmm. people are submitting. Mm -hmm. Don't get trapped by online technique. What I mean don't get trapped by online technique is that, okay, this may not be in ACRI, eh? But I, I inform because some they say that I've made an innovation. I transform my teaching. Previously, I do lectures face to face. Now I do lectures using Zoom. Uh, previously, students submit my uh, the report by hand to me in front of the room. But now they submit using Google Drive. Okay, so actually, what is the innovation? Here we go. Ah, uh, see. Everybody, Charissa, during the pandemic. I was actually trying to ask you this question yes. because you uh, know, how can I actually differentiate the technology application? It's actually transformative because, yeah, currently what we are doing is hybrid method, we are doing yes. the online method, but yeah, I'm still wondering how can we differentiate the element of uh, transformative learning? Uh, I still cannot see that, you know. Ah, okay, <laughs> I see. Uh, let's see if you were the judges. How would you evaluate like, okay, um, you know, we have a, co a course outline that is theoretical in nature. And okay. then we have certain course outline whereby it is a practical in nature. Mm -hmm. And we do have the lecture, uh, the elective courses, and then we have the university courses. Of course, all this, uh, the assessment method, the technology in teaching method might be different. So can you give us like one course, for example, then can you, uh, I mean, I, I think I can perceive better when you give an example from that course so that we can know how to differentiate or else I can say, oh, okay, I cannot differentiate at the moment. Ah, Thank okay, you. right. <laughs> cannot differentiate, right? That's why I was telling you. Yes, yes. Because now when you say that, Previously, I didn't do videos. Now I do videos. Everybody is doing videos right now. Uh, right. Okay. The, the difference is how do you use that particular thing? Okay. Uh, just to, to explain. Uh, you, uh, all of you, I'm sure, familiar with uh, Google, right? During this pandemic, we have a Google slide to prepare PowerPoint. Uh, you have uh, Google Docs. You have also Google Sheet for Excel. Now, the, the power of Google is that you are able to allow the student to collaborate from anywhere. Right? So the student can prepare report all together without being in the same place uh, preparing the report. So how do you design the collaboration, the learning through that? So when you say that, okay, I pre I uh, the the students submit uh, using Google Sheet. Okay, it's normal. But your design of using Google Sheet to allow the student to work together. Uh, so that is the transformative teaching that you want to look. Okay. Sometimes take for example, just having using Google Sheet, but having that tool, you allow them to collaborate with other students outside of the universities. Okay, so you're using Google Sheet, but 
apart from using Google Sheet, just to collaborate among you, you ask them to incorporate, for example, industry to enter, personnel from the industry, or maybe from the alumni. So that is another, you transform the teaching, which previously was not able to do. When you do in the face-to-face -face, uh, time, the cost needed for this uh, industry to come to the classroom. Okay, But having this uh, method of uh, Google Sheet, they also learn from industries. Okay, They have their own uh, discussion through videos. Okay, So it's not about you giving the lectures, but they also get some knowledge from the industry because through online, everything can be considered like uh, low cost except for the cost of the data. Uh, so this is apart from what you see as transformative teaching. Another one, uh, apart from uh, preparing the, the report, maybe you transform the Google Sheet or Google Slide into an interactive uh, platform. Okay? Uh, I, I give you one, one example. I give you one, one example. Uh, just to show to show to you, uh, if you allow, uh, to me. This is what I did uh, during the pandemic. Just to show you, uh, let me open my Google Drive, and then I'll share. Okay. Okay. Can you see the 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 one that I display? Yes. Okay. This is the lab class that I conducted, where I transform my kit. It's one of my kit, Fish Gene Pro. Uh, basically, it is a, a hands-on kit, but I transform them using Google Slide, and the student did their uh, lab exercise by play, playing around with the fish, okay, determining the interaction and estimating the outcome. So normally Google Slide is for preparing like PowerPoint. So instead of preparing PowerPoint, I created this uh, uh, transform, the one my kit into an online. So these are the things that students work together and do. See, so rather than using uh, the same tool for the same purpose, you are using Google Slide to make presentation, but now you are using this to transform and do this. Now, another one. Okay, this is last time the kit that, that won me the award, Fish Breed Pro, but due to the pandemic, I could not did this face-to-face. Uh, -face. So what did I do? We created this using Google Slide Platform. This is where the student developed their own uh, pawns. Okay, I asked them to create a company. You are a company of supplying a fish. So now you need to design your pawn. So who are your board of directors? And these are all created by the students. Okay, but I made a disclaimer. Um, this is not award winning. I'm just trying to share you to, to, answer the, to, to answer the question. So you can see 
the student design, they need to discuss, design their own ponds, their own facilities. And uh, each group has to create their own fish strain and they need to interact with the other groups to buy the fish, okay, to do their, their uh, breeding program. And they follow the step-by-step -step process. So just like having coming to the lab, uh, make it a little bit bigger. Just like coming to the lab and do things all together, and now they do it this online. Mm -hmm. You see, crossing the fish, and then uh, uh, put in the record and so on and so forth. So. This is some example of what we call it transformative teaching. So rather than you do this, you transform into an interactive uh, Google slide, but not for the preparing of the presentation. Uh, so using this allows them to collaborate and be more creative rather than having to wait for my kit that I have designed. Mm -hmm. So now they design by, the, by themselves. Uh, Let's look at another company. So everybody designed their own ponds. They become more creative. Okay. Uh, and they have a better view of uh, the whole process because they create their own, uh, their own uh, understanding. And the good thing about this is they can just copy, paste, duplicate the pond to continue the next activity. And they don't need to delete this compared to the, to the, the, to the actual uh, hands-on things. The hands-on, after they have uh, da, done their lab work, then they need to clear up, right? Uh, put it back in the, in the box and so on. Now they can uh, leave it like this so that allows them to revisit and understand what they are, are being doing. So uh, this is an example of what uh, transformative teaching during online, where you modify the use of certain apps Okay, uh, for a different purpose. Uh, as I said just now, just to repeat, you know that you use Google Slide just to prepare PowerPoint. But now rather than having PowerPoint, you transform them to become a lab session. Uh, these are the things that you can, you can think of. I believe some, uh, a lot of you have uh, doing some uh, modification to, the, uh, through, to your uh, approach. Ah, yes. Especially during this time, online teaching, we have to find suitable uh, platform, uh, approach that satisfy both lecturers yes. and students. Correct. Uh, the, the most important thing is the uniqueness of your approach. Yes. And, uh, let's say that, okay, everybody is using Padlet. So what is the difference of you using Padlet uh, with the one that other people are using Padlet? Okay, that, uh, just to give you another one. Eh? Um, uh, just to give you an example, I use a lot of uh, Kahoot, but my Kahoot that I use is different from others is that the design of the question, I'm teaching students on how to memorize fish. My subject is another subject. Their cognitive level is K2, understanding. So understanding that if the student can see the thing repetitively, the, the hypothesis, they would understand better. So I designed the question, okay, so that the question will come up in relation and in, in a repetitive manner. And hoping that through that kind of questioning, 
Still okay. remember. Yes. So it's not just creating the question, answer, uh, question in, uh, in Kahoot for them like to have fun. Space, right? Ah, yes. <laughs> like uh, so this is an example of you want to tell the uniqueness of your approach. So everybody is using Kahoot, but what is the difference between you using Kahoot with other people using Kahoot? Okay, got, got that point. Thank you, Dr. Shariza. Okay. okay. Um, any more question from the floor? Yeah, I think that uh, there is no more question. Yeah. Uh, so I would like to thank you um, to Dr. Shariza uh, for, for the time, very good time that you spent um, you will to spend and share your experience uh, with us today. Thank you very much. And hopefully we we start thinking what kind of transformative teaching and maybe uh, we can join the competition that apply for it, inshallah. inshallah. Actually, I think uh, for me, it's quite new, actually, Akri. This Akri is uh, quite, um, um, quite new for me. So I'd like to thank you. And also, I, to, I would like to thank to participants for the time that you give to join the session and also the organizer speedy so i thank you uh, with this i would like to end our session with us becky faro and surah al as okay uh, with this i end the session thank you very much